本日はご多忙の中ご来場ください。Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for coming despite your very busy schedules. Let us now start the financial results announcement for fiscal 2014. Let us introduce to you the participants of today. Akio Todoya, president of the company. Nobuyori Kodaira, executive vice president. Tetsuya Otake, a managing, um, a managing officer from the uh, accounting and finance department. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Toyota, the president, will, make a, will give you a brief outline of the announcement. And Mr. Kodaira will talk about the details of the financial results for fiscal 2014. And afterwards, we will take questions. Uh, today, we are linked to the Nagoya office. Uh, so we are have participants from Nagoya, including the Q&A. Uh, today's press conference will be uh, posted on the web. There are some cautionary statements with respect to forward-looking statements at the beginning of today's uh, document, so please refer to that as well. Mr. Toyota, please. Thank you for waiting, ladies and gentlemen. I am Akio Toyoda. Thank you very much for joining us despite your occupied schedules. I really appreciate your presence. For the fiscal year ended March 2015, our consolidated operating income reached 2 trillion 750.5 billion yen, primarily as a result of group wide cost reduction efforts and depreciation of the yen. I would like to express our sincere gratitude to all those involved, including our dealers and suppliers, and above all, to our customers around the world for choosing our cars. I believe that our financial results are the outcome of continuous efforts made by individuals within our company, including those at production lines who are painstakingly seeking to make the most of every last second and every last yen, striving to improve productivity, and those at product development who are working tirelessly to translate their visions for ever better cars from conceptual drawings to reality. They also have our sincere thanks. With regard to the year-end dividend, we plan to propose 125 yen per share at the annual general meeting of shareholders later this year, including the interim dividend of 75 yen. The full year dividend will be 200 yen. We also plan to repurchase up to 300 billion yen of our common stock. To ensure that our shareholders feel rewarded, we intend to continue paying dividends stably and sustainably while flexibly considering share buybacks. We also are focused on competitive and sustainable growth growth of our products, transformation of our facilities and of our people, and investment in innovative technologies that make life greener, safer, and easier for everyone. Over recent years, we have been pursuing the development of the foundations for sustainable growth through the introduction of Toyota New Global Architecture, TNGA, to radically change our vehicle manufacturing and business units. Last year, we began to take further initiatives to integrate the resources of the Toyota Group beyond the boundaries of companies and organizations by establishing a new North American headquarters and reorganizing our diesel engine businesses. On February 24th, the fifth anniversary of when I attended the U.S. Congressional hearing, we were able to take the first step towards innovation for the next 100 years with an event celebrating the line-off of the Mirai, our new fuel cell vehicle. When I think about Toyota going forward, there are still many things that we must do. After the losses we incurred after the global financial crisis and recall issues, we learned that competitiveness must be improved on a number of fronts, 
if we wish to grow sustainably. While some aspects of competitiveness required for a company, such as marketing effectiveness and cost reduction, can be directly linked with vehicle sales and earnings, others are not necessarily visible in short-term results, such as the ability to develop attractive products, the ability to maintain and improve quality, and most important, the ability to invest in our people so they can take ownership for their work and feel a greater sense of fulfillment. The appreciation and the support of our customers, investors, and the local communities we are involved in are also of the utmost importance. I believe that true competitiveness is competitiveness that embraces all these aspects. Only through true competitiveness can sustainable growth be attained. Now, how is Toyota faring on the way toward true competitiveness? While we are beginning to see some promising signs, there is still much left to be done. The point is to establish the continuous cycle of freeing up resources for innovation by rationalizing investment, improving productivity, reducing costs, and investing such resources into the development of ever better cars and strengthening of our team of talented people. We must maintain this cycle without fail and create vibrant and robust gembas or workplaces that are always evolving. In this context, the current fiscal year will be an important turning point for Toyota. Will Toyota take a solid step on a new path toward sustainable growth, or will we go back to where we were despite our efforts made so far? After a three-year pause on new plant development, Toyota recently announced the construction of a new plant in Mexico and a new production line in China. These new facilities will be among the first to utilize from the ground up the innovative production technologies developed during our three-year pause. In this way, we intend to create plants instantly renowned for their competitiveness. At our existing plants, we plan to promote new initiatives, measures, and efforts beyond what have been done before and to invest with clear intentions in order to support not only quantitative but qualitative growth. In April, we revamped our executive structure with the aim of being able to reflect the efforts of the front lines, the engines of our growth, immediately in the management of our company. To that end, business units, regions, and functions are now led by presidents and chief officers closer to the front lines, while leaders who are non-Japanese, from technical backgrounds, or from group companies have been newly appointed to executive positions. Leaders from diverse backgrounds will work closely with teams on the front lines. They will be able to make swift decisions based on genchi genbutsu, or hands-on knowledge of the situation on the ground. They will also introduce new values and ideas to Toyota. They will be agents of change. As a result, I believe that if each individual at Toyota continues to rise to new challenges, we will be empowered as an organization to grow each and every day. Let me reiterate that we are entering an important phase that will call into question our two main drivers in achieving sustainable growth, building better cars and strengthening our team. We will start launching TNGA vehicles from the second half of this year, and by 2020, TNGA vehicles will account for roughly half of our global new car sales. Our new competitive production facilities will come online from around 2018 to 2019, and our initiatives to smartly build attractive cars will finally be implemented. We are also accelerating investment in new growth areas to support the smart mobility societies of the future, such as the development of the next generation environmental technologies, commercialization of advanced driving support technologies utilizing advanced IT and social infrastructure technologies, and the continued development of a robotics business. 
It's my true belief that to ensure our competitiveness and success for the many years ahead, we must focus on sustainable growth, growth of our products, transformation of our facilities and of our people, and investment in innovative technologies that make life greener, safer, and easier for everyone. We are going doing this through our Toyota new global architecture. Our recent restructuring of our business units, our expanded leadership teams, and our dedication to help change the world through mobility, mobility inside the car, like automated driving and fuel cell solutions, and mobility outside the car through robotics. I will remain united with our leaders on the front lines and work with them to promote measures to help build true competence so that Toyota can uh, grow sustainably. Now let us invite Mr. Kodaira, EVP, for his presentation on the financial results. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. My name is Kodaira from a Toyota Motor Company. Now let me uh, discuss Toyota's financial results for the fiscal year ended March 2015. Our consolidated vehicle sales for the fiscal year decreased by 144,000 units year on year to 8,972,000 units. This was due to declined sales mainly in Japan, affected by the consumption tax hike, and in Asia, where main markets remain stagnant despite increased sales in North America. Our consolidated financial performance resulted in net revenues of 27,234,500 billion yen, operating income 2,750,500 billion yen, pre-tax income 2,892,800 billion yen, net income of 2,173,300 billion yen. I would like to highlight the major factors which impacted operating income year on year. The positive factors, such as favorable foreign exchange rates and cost reduction efforts, more than offset the negative factors, such as decreased vehicle sales and an increase in expenses, including investments to enhance our future competitiveness. As a result, operating income increased by 458.4 billion yen compared to the previous fiscal year. Now I would like to discuss operating income for each region, starting with Japan. Although new products such as the Lexus NX and the Esquire and the remodeled Alphard and Velfire, which were launched in January, drove sales, overall vehicle sales decreased by 211,000 units to 2,154,000 units as demand was affected by the raised consumption tax. Operating income, however, increased by 61.3 billion yen to 1,571.4 billion yen as a result of favorable foreign exchange rates and cost reduction efforts, despite increased expenses to accelerate research and development, among others. In North America, Against the backdrop of solid market conditions, vehicle sales rose by 186,000 units year on year to 2,715,000 units, driven particularly by the enhanced Camry, in addition to the Corolla and the RAV4. Operating income, excluding valuation gains and losses from interest rate swaps, etc., was 537.9 billion yen, up 196.4 billion yen compared to the previous year. This was mainly a result of increased vehicle sales volume and cost reduction efforts. Next, Europe. A vehicle sales grew by 15,000 units year on year to 859,000 units. This was due to solid sales of the Yaris and the Camry and the contribution from the sales of the new IGO. Operating income was 81.1 billion yen, up 22.8 billion yen year on year as a result of cost reduction efforts in addition to increased vehicle sales. Please note that the fiscal year for subsidiaries in Russia ends in December. Therefore, the above reflects their performance from January to December of 2014. Next is Asia. 
Overall vehicle sales were down 120,000 units year on year. This was primarily due to decline sales in Thailand and Indonesia. And despite increased sales of renewed models such as the Yaris and the Corolla, demand remained weak and competition intensified in these markets. In spite of weaker sales, operating income improved by 26 billion yen year on year to 421.7 billion yen, mainly as a result of cost reduction efforts. In other regions, Vehicle sales increased in Central and South America, but decreased mainly in Africa. As a result, overall vehicle sales fell by 14,000 units to 1,755,000 units from the previous fiscal year. Operating income was 111.5 billion yen, up 68.9 billion yen year on year, primarily due to marketing efforts and decreased expenses, with which more than offset the negative impact of the depreciation of the local currencies. Please be reminded that the costs related to the ending of production in Australia were posted in the previous fiscal year. Operating income, excluding uh, valuation gains and losses from interest rate swaps, uh, etc., for financial services, maintained the level of the previous fiscal year at 321.9 billion yen. This was primarily due to an increased lending balance and translational impact of the weaker yen, despite increased costs related to loan losses and residual value losses. Equity in earnings of affiliated companies for the fiscal year was 308.5 billion yen, down 9.8 billion yen year on year. Please note that the fiscal year end of our affiliated companies in China is December. Therefore, equity in earnings of these companies reflects their earnings from January to December 2014. Hi. Uh, with regard to the year-end dividend, we plan to propose 125 yen per share at the annual general meeting of shareholders next month. The full year dividend will therefore be 200 yen per share, including the interim dividend of 75 yen per share. This represents an increase by 35 yen per share compared to the previous fiscal year. We regard dividends as our most important means to return value to shareholders. In order to develop a long-term relationship of trust with our shareholders, we plan to pay dividends stably and sustainably. Please be informed that at a board of directors meeting earlier today, a plan to repurchase up to 300 billion yen or 40 million shares of our common stock was resolved. Under the principle of paying stable and sustainable dividends, we intend to repurchase shares flexibly as a means of shareholder return while considering our long-term capital efficiency. Now I would like to move on to discuss our outlook for the current fiscal year ending in March 2016. With regard to our consolidated vehicle sales, we expect a decline by 72,000 units year on year to 8.9 million units. We are assuming stronger sales in North America where the market is solid, but weaker sales in Asia where the sales environment is getting more challenging and in emerging markets such as Russia and the Middle East where declining oil prices are affecting demand. Based on the forex assumptions of 115 yen to the U.S. dollar and 125 yen to the euro, our forecasts of consolidated financial performance for the current fiscal year is net revenues of 27 trillion 500 billion yen, operating income of 2 trillion 800 billion yen, pre-tax income of 2 trillion 970 billion yen, and net income of 2 trillion 250 billion yen. For the analysis of our operating income forecast for the current fiscal year in comparison to the previous fiscal year is shown here. We are expecting a negative impact from the vehicle sales and model mix as well as the foreign exchange rates as we have factored in a depreciation of the Russian ruble, the Brazilian real, etc. 
Despite this challenging environment, and while proactively investing to promote competitiveness and innovation for the future, we are determined to improve our profit structure even further through continued marketing efforts such as efficient sales promotions and cost reduction efforts focusing on the company-wide VA and new model launches. Finally, for our forecast of R&D expenses, capex and depreciation expenses, uh, please refer to the slide currently shown. With regard to research and development of technologies, we have launched the Mirai and started commercializing Toyota Safety Sense, a package of technologies to support safe driving, new engines with superior thermal efficiency and fuel efficiency, and new turbocharged engines. Thus, our efforts over the past years are gradually beginning to bear fruit. In the current fiscal year, we will start renewal of our core models, which are sold across emerging markets. And in the second half of the year, we plan to launch the first model, which incorporates TNGA. The full contribution of these models to our sales volume and earnings is expected to be seen sometime after 2016. In the meantime, we remain committed to making a steady progress towards ever better cars for our customers while pursuing effectiveness and efficiency of our investments. While enhancing our true competitiveness and earning structure, we will continue to aim at achieving sustainable growth by investing in new areas for growth and developing new technologies in view of the next 10 years, 20 years, and even beyond. This concludes my presentation on the financial results for the fiscal year, which ended in March 2015. Thank you very much for your attention. Now we are ready to take questions. If you have any questions, please wait for the microphone. Please raise your hand and wait for the microphone. We would like to take questions from as many people as possible, and therefore, please limit the number of questions to two. The person in the white shirt. My name is Okudare from the Nihon Keizai Shinbun. I have two questions. The first question is about the previous fiscal year and this fiscal year. Uh, last year, um, Mr. Toyoda talked about intentional pools to strengthen competitiveness. If you look at the results, both the sales and profits seem to be very good. And how, what is your uh, assessment of this? And I have the other uh, question is, in the midterm, what will you aim at? Uh, it seems like your forecast uh, uh, seems to be expecting modest growth for both um, uh, sales and profits, but what is your outlook for the new fiscal year? Now, let me give you an answer first. Uh, for the year ended March of this year and uh, this new fiscal year starting this April, uh, for the year ended March of this year, as was mentioned in the presentation, um, you saw the numbers. Mr. Toyoda mentioned uh, intentional pause to strengthen competitiveness last year. So this was an intentional pause. Um, uh, we made investments uh, uh, for capital investment and R&D uh, for innovation. And on the other hand, we worked on improving gross margin. Uh, we also made efforts in sales and marketing, and we also made efforts to reduce cost. And by doing so, we were able to uh, improve our profitability uh, structure. Uh, we saw a major impact of uh, cost reduction, and that all that led to the performance of the last fiscal year. The efforts made by the dealers and suppliers and also the support given to us by them and the efforts of uh, people working for uh, Toyota all brought about this performance. I would like to express my appreciation to all those people. Uh, for fiscal 2015, this year, as was mentioned, unit sales 
this year uh, is expected to decline as well. Uh, but for profitability, uh, the uh, growth itself is modest, but uh, we will continue to work on sustainable uh, growth and we will continue to make investment to that end so that we can make improvements in the cost and profitability structure. So we will aim at sustained uh, growth in the medium term and towards that end we will continue to solidify our foundation. This year, uh, core models in emerging markets uh, will be uh, renewed, and towards the end of this year, the first TNGA model is expected to be launched. And uh, we are also expecting the construction of a new uh, factory, factories. Uh, so uh, we have uh, continued to make um, efforts uh, during the intentional post to strengthen competitiveness of phase, uh, and uh, this is an important year to reap the fruit of those uh, years. Uh, new models, uh, new factories will make a contribution to profits in sales from next fiscal year, uh, but uh, based on a medium term uh, perspective, uh, we will continue to make efforts to improve profitability in the midterm. Now, let me add a comment. More than anything, I would like to express my appreciation to our customers who chose to buy Toyota cars. And the dealers and other people uh, worked on making ever better cars. And I would like to thank all these people for their uh, cumulative um, efforts. Last year, I used the word intentional post to strengthen competitiveness. Uh, how long will this intentional post be? What is the current status? Frankly speaking, what oh, oh, uh, the new factories that we announced the other day and the uh, TNGA uh, vehicle launch uh, towards the latter half of this year would mean we are going into the execution stage from the intentional pause stage. But we entered that new execution stage, but both the new factories and TNGA um, will have to continue to make efforts toward realization. A challenge uh, and errors will be, will continue to be repeated, but uh, the endurance uh, that we experienced uh, during the intentional pause and the challenges that we took during the intentional pause is about to bring us into the next stage. But uh, TNGA vehicles uh, and the new factories, when they actually start up, and when we face a crisis like the Lehman shock, which we cannot uh, control ourselves, we will be able to see how strong uh, Toyota has become. Uh, we will continue to make uh, efforts so that even in face of crisis, we will continue to meet the expectations of our customers. Let me move on to the next question. Person seated in the second row from the front, in the center of the room. Ogawa, Yomiri newspaper. Thank you for the opportunity. For the current fiscal year, your plans have been mentioned, and you also talked about the forecast of sales volume. I heard that. And your expectation for overseas market is relatively strong, but the domestic market seems to be leveling off. The productive age population is uh, going to decline here in Japan, uh, resulting in shrinking of the pie itself, and some uh, of the companies have stopped exporting from vehicles uh, from Japan. But in the Toyo case of Toyota, it is producing both in Japan and overseas. But from a medium and long-term perspective, what is your assessment of the, that sort of situation and what sort of uh, efforts or initiatives do you intend to take, Mr. President? Well, let me answer that question. In the case of Toyota, or as far as we are concerned, within Japan, domestically, 
we need to maintain various competitiveness, including the state-of-the-art technology development, human resource development, strengthening people, and uh, conducting manufacturing activities. From those perspectives, on the global production is led by our ability here in Japan. Japan assumes that role of leading the entire world in manufacturing excellence. So for Japan to be able to assume and play such a role, 3 million represents a yardstick to maintain production capacity. And to that end, the technological development, production, and strengthening and nurturing people, those efforts will be continued. And through those efforts, we will made strive to maintain the production level of 3 million here in Japan. We faced extended period of extremely strong yen, and even at that period, we endured working closely together with suppliers. We maintained important production base here in Japan. So bearing that in mind, we intend to make as much effort as possible to that end. Uh, last year, throughout the year, uh, I felt that producing 10 million units of vehicles, selling them and offering after the sales services represents a huge mission and huge uh, work. And that also represents a huge responsibility that was really brought home to me seriously. And 3 million uh, production here in Japan, that's 3 million out of 10 million uh, volume that is produced here in Japan. Having said that, the sales in Japan stands at 1.5 million. So what is that relative relationship may be the core of your question. Now, for Toyota to be Toyota, essentially, as a global company, we need to value and we must maintain the foundation of made by Toyota products. We need to be at the leading edge of that made by Toyota vehicles. We have long history here in Japan. That history is full of challenges and errors in Japan. So from that perspective, the 3 million produced here in Japan uh, would lead the way for other production bases outside of Japan producing 7 million. For those overseas production base to be recognized and accepted as good corporate citizen, this 3 million in Japan will continue to be vital. And for that to happen, the Japanese production base must be competitive enough. So from that perspective, there are various factors affecting that. The exchange rate, I once talked about six difficulties of plates uh, affecting us. I mean, there are many challenges confronting manufacturing industry. But regardless of what happens, no matter how serious the adversity may be, we must make sure that 3 million produced here in Japan carries its own value, leading production of 7 million outside of Japan from the production basis producing 7 million uh, should keep in competitive relationship in enhancing their capability against the Japanese uh, production base producing 3 million. So through many partners engaged in automotive in business, we intend to enhance uh, further competitiveness through various initiatives and efforts. The person in gray. My name is Ayuchi from TV Tokyo. I have a question to Mr. Toyoda. So you are enjoying the highest ever uh, profit. RCF sports car and well uh, fire. Um, the luxury uh, vehicles, what kind of impact does that have on Japan or the domestic market? And this year you'll be seeing the GSF being uh, launched. How will these models uh, contribute to growth of uh, Toyota? Uh, since I assumed the uh, presidency of this company, I have continued to say the following. Let us continue to make ever better cars. Uh, Toyota is a full lineup uh, manufacturer, so exciting cars, the uh, wakudoki cars, uh, and cars that are necessary for people to do business, and uh, environmentally friendly uh, vehicles, and extremely safe vehicles, which will give peace of mind to people. Uh, so as a full lineup manufacturer, we have the responsibility to provide all these different kinds of uh, vehicles. And personally, I think that 
uh, vehicles should continue to be an emotional um, existence that will give excitement to the wakudoki. So RCF, Alphard, Velfire, uh, these are vehicles um, that have a very distinct and strong uh, emotional character. Uh, you mentioned it was a luxury car. Well, it may be classified as a luxury car, uh, but it is uh, affordable if you make a little bit of effort. So cars are fun, cars are necessary. That is what we would like our customers to continue to think. And in Japanese, we use the word Aisha, which literally means loving your car. Uh, so we would like to continue to make uh, vehicles that will be loved by our customers. So we would like to ask for your continued support and cooperation. Can I ask another question? Uh, a lot of overseas manufacturers, luxury cars are entering the Japanese market. How do you intend to compete against these? You mentioned a lot of um, cars coming in from overseas. That would mean uh, more choices for customers. For customers, I believe that is a very good thing. Uh, through competition, safer, a more eco-friendly, a more exciting uh, car with the wakudoki factor uh, being uh, produced by various companies, including Toyota is uh, what we would like to see in the market, and we would like to have your continued support. At this juncture, we would like to entertain questions from Nagoya. This is a hall in Nagoya, and we have some questions from Nagoya. Chiyobu Economic Journal, Kikuchi is my name. Thank you for the opportunity. I have uh, two major questions. Question number one. Uh, relates to uh, shareholders' interest. Uh, shareholders are quite interested in ROE. In the fiscal year just ended in March 2015, 13.9% was the ROE. And what is your assessment of that ROE figure? And uh, the target for the current fiscal year, as well as your approach to that, would be very much appreciated. Question number two. Since the beginning of the new fiscal year, as you explained earlier, you changed or abolished the area responsibility for EVAs, and also you enhanced the power given to board members or EVPs. So that was a major um, management uh, reorganization. What is the purpose of conducting this managerial uh, restructuring at this point in time from a medium and long-term perspective and plans for the current year? need to be described as well. Uh, allow me to respond to your question relating to ROE. As you have just mentioned, in the fiscal year ended in March 2015, the ROE stood at 13.9%. In fiscal year ending in March last year, it stood at 13.7%. So there's been gradual increase from the previous fiscal year. ROE is determined by various factors, but basically by enhancing earnings, is the key. And as I mentioned earlier, we are making various initiatives and efforts. And as a result of that, the operating income in the previous fiscal year was generated. As far as the uh, currently running fiscal year is concerned, we'll continue with our efforts of improving earnings structure so that uh, the return related indicator can be improved as much as possible. So that's what we intend to do. But those are only one of the indicators used or considered. I mean, generally speaking, the ROE is given such an importance nowadays, it seems. But in principle, in running the company, managing the company, we look at many different indicators and indices. And ROE is one of the important indicators that we give thoughts to. And we'll keep that uh, as such in your mind in running our business in the current fiscal year. About your second question, the new management lineup, the objective and intention behind that. I personally want Toyota to be a company that can continue sustainable growth. So I need to, uh, I wanted to have the management lineup uh, having the right people at the right assumptions so that they can respond to whatever problems and whatever challenges occur 
Now, why do we continue to grow? And what is growth all about? I receive that question very uh, often. I mean, volume and earnings are visible uh, growth, and uh, oftentimes those are discussed as the growth. But since I became president, I have gone through many trials and difficulties, and I personally and also Toyota came to realize that there are different types of growth. There are certain growth that is not immediately visible, that is not uh, immediately lead to results. In the case of Toyota, whether we are approaching closer to ever better cars, are we nurturing people with their own initiative, ability to consider the cultivating the soils, uh, sowing seed, whether uh, oh, they reaping the fruits, is a good balance uh, maintained between the two? Those are different indicators of growth. And in terms of vehicles, the greener cars, safer cars, cars that can enhance the sense of security, the cars that are exciting and exhilarating, albeit at a gradual pace, I think we are moving in that direction. We are making progress. So from that perspective, the basic measure of growth, which is supported by the basic unit of competitiveness, includes both visible factors and invisible factors. There are numerous factors. And those factors that are not readily visible need to be enhanced, I personally believe. And in that context, what is most important, in my view, is people, nurturing people. That, I think, is my most important mission and responsibility. So in that context, within Toyota Group, the diesel engine business, the brake business, those are the areas where we wanted to uh, conduct far-reaching reform uh, to enhance competitiveness. And we are pushing ahead with those reforms. And in that context, what I felt strongly the need for change was the TMC itself. And I personally have, uh, have a serious sense of crisis in that area, the needed reform within TMC itself. And therefore, in this management uh, restructuring, we delegated the power to those people close to the Gemba so that they can make decisions promptly. And the true competitiveness is determined by people to further refine and nurture, uh, hone that ability we I decided to change this management lineup that was objective. Thank you. Uh, we want to take as uh, questions from as many people as possible. So one question per person, please. I am from Asahi Shimbun. I have a question about tax. Uh, first, uh, there was a consumption tax raise, and I believe um, Toyota has in seen an increase um, in re refunds. Um, how much increase have you seen compared to the a time of a 5% consumption and tax? Some people say 180 million, 180 billion. And my second question is about uh, um, R&D uh, tax credit, uh, that was about 100 billion yen plus. <laughs> A company the size of Toyota, do you need this uh, tax credit? Um, even without these um, credits, you should be able to carry out R&D at the same scale. Um, Mr. Toyota, please. The first uh, question was about the refund um, uh, consumption tax. I, we will refrain from uh, talking about a specific um, uh, tax amounts. Uh, your second question was about uh, R&D tax credit. In the automobile industry, there is a lot of uh, global uh, competition of research and development. In that environment, each company is uh, continuing to make efforts in uh, R&D to enhance competitiveness so that they can compete against uh, other strong uh, companies. And in that environment, uh, technical development is uh, more important than anything. The national government's um, tax system, uh, I believe, has a very positive effect on promoting R&D. Because of that uh, system, 
um, R&D activities uh, are enhanced and um, promoted quite a lot. Uh, so we would like to ask the national government to continue to have that kind of um, activity or policy. Uh, the lady in the center of the room, the third row from the front. Kubota, Wall Street Journal. You talked about the enhancement of competitiveness of a Toyota group as a whole. My question relates to that. Earlier, you mentioned that uh, you want to have the structure. You have conducted restructuring so that you can uh, mobilize the entire uh, group capabilities. And I think you were referring to the November decision of integration as well as the management reorganization. Why such uh, change is needed at this point in time. What, in your view, are the major challenges of entire Toyota Group, and how do you intend to overcome that and enhance our competitiveness, given the fierce competition of the automotive uh, industry, the emergence of uh, mega suppliers of Germany? In conjunction with them, if you could answer my question, I would appreciate that. The automotive industry of the entire world is uh, seeing fiercer and fiercer competition. And in that context, Toyota has a history of 77 years. Toyota was born here in Japan, and together with companies within Toyota Group, we have established the structure to be able to compete on the global scene. That's what we have been doing over the years. And very seriously, honestly, and in a very assiduous manner, we continue with our initiatives and efforts. And that's one important and outstanding characteristics of a Toyota corporate group. But at the same time, I. The fact that we are making those uh, honest and very um, assiduous efforts may also have resulted in uh, energies uh, dedicated uh, only internally within the group. But we need to have companies within Toyota Group uh, to be able to compete against outside competitors. We need to change the formation uh, for doing that. That, I think, has become necessary uh, in the current phase of automotive industry of the world. And above all, at present, or especially in the past few years, the customers and many people really supported uh, Toyota, backed us up. And uh, Toyota, I think, has now acquired the strong constitution and the power uh, to eye toward the future. And because we are gaining that power, uh, we need to firmly strengthen our financial strength as well as uh, fiscal constitution through a new birth of Toyota. And that new birth for Toyota, the new innovation, need to be initiatives uh, in, in, implemented in the manner that we can enhance competitiveness of the entire group in the future. And what can we do was uh, utmost in your mind when I restructure that management lineup. Uh, the person at the very front, in the middle. My name is Yamada from Toyo Keizai. I have one question. Uh, this uh, is related to the first question. The uh, last year uh, continued to be the intentional pause uh, phase. But uh, uh, is this intentional pause not over uh, yet? Uh, you talked about the turning point. Uh, so. Maybe um, you are at a turning point where you will move up or down from the intentional pause phase. Of course, I believe you are aiming up going up. I understand that you cannot mention any figures, but ultimately, will growth be uh, described in number of units or by the margin? And when will you see those um, profits, or, or when will you see when will you see that uh, growth? And what is your uh, current thinking? Now, uh, you referred to the intentional pause to strengthen competitiveness. Uh, there are various um, phases, but now we are at a stage of uh, execution. Uh, for example, uh, the first TNGA vehicle will be launched this year, and. Uh, 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 several years down, about half of our cars will be TNGA-based. Uh, and uh, over the past three years, uh, we have opposed to create new factories, but we have just started uh, to work on new uh, factories. Uh, 
So we are now moving from the intentional pause phase to the uh, execution implementation phase. Uh, during the intentional pause phase, the management um, target was to continue to take up challenges. When Toyota does something, uh, we should be able to see a positive result. That is the ideal. But uh, sometimes our efforts do not bear fruit. But if we stopped to take up challenges, we will surely see a stoppage in growth as well. So uh, taking up challenges uh, continuously, that stage has just started. Uh, various projects of Toyota have been implemented in the past. Zero times, zero a time, rather than being a company with zero times at bad and zero hits, um, we would like to become a company where uh, people who come up to that um, be highly evaluated. In the medium to long term, the investors, the local community, and the employees should be able to uh, put a smile on their faces uh, if we become a company that highly appreciates people that continue to take up uh, challenges. In other words, that continue to go up to bat rather than <laughs> declining from going to bat. So human resources uh, uh, development will uh, give, be uh, one hint uh, to um, assess the growth of uh, Toyota. Since the time to close this session is approaching, uh, I would like to invite the very last question. The first person in the first front row, please. Goto of Chunichi newspaper. Most of the questions have already been answered, but uh, my question relates to different regions, geogra uh, geographies. The margin of growth of North America, especially the uh, profit, uh, is very large. This, I think, is a result of your efforts for improvement. But looking at other regions of the world, the increase in profit earnings seem to be quite uh, small. Aiming at well-balanced growth going forward, other than North America, in order to enhance earnings in areas other than uh, North America, what sort of initiatives or measures do you think you need to take and do you intend to take? For one thing, in emerging countries, of course, the, uh, situations vary from country to country, but in the past, the emerging countries overall have been growing at the same time, but quite different uh, now. The energy exporting countries or resource exporting countries are suffering because of the decline in prices of those commodities and economic and social conditions, which forms the foundation for automotive market, uh, seems to be uh, quite stagnant for the time being and softened. However, each of those emerging market countries do have very strong potential for growth over a medium long term. So keeping that in mind, we will strengthen sales and marketing structure firmly, and wherever we conduct manufacturing activities, we'll continue to enhance productivity, uh, nurture people, as well as uh, enhance competitiveness in those production bases. And what is important above all is the enhancement of uh, product appeals, the marketability and performance of our own vehicles. This year, uh, we are going to renew across the board the core models sold in emerging countries. And therefore, our first priority is uh, to start those uh, renewal of our core models in emerging markets uh, without fail so that this can really lead to the enhanced sales in emerging uh, countries and subsequently to the earnings. The outcome uh, could represent increase or decrease, but I always talk about steady growth 
year by year. What I intend by saying that is that we want to be better next year than this year, and even better two years from now, from next year. There are many different indicators, including sales volume, the earnings, and those may be visible uh, in terms of contribution to profit, but there are other indicators that are not so visible. But at least we'll continue to make take up challenges, and people who are willing to take up those uh, uh, challenges are increasing, which means that through this steady growth-oriented management, Toyota will be ready to become the company that can really achieve sustainable growth. I think we are now making such preparations and getting ready for that. Of course, the future defies any prediction, but uniting our intentions and efforts with those people on the game by the front lines going forward, I hope uh, we can also enjoy the benefit of your support. Thank you very much. Since we have went overboard with Tom, we would like to conclude this session with this. Thank you very much for joining us despite your occupied schedules. Thank you.